tiles have arrived. That's the top of the bar. Off to getting finished, tiled. A lot of tiling on the floor. Little bits have gone in. More wood in here, which I've yet to varnish. It's all going to be tiled. More boards. So, underfloor heating will be going in. This is where the pool table is going to be sit. This sitting. This is a mock up of the table. So, yeah, underfloor heating around the pool table area and around the seating area. Obviously, not underneath the table. We'll be running around. So, down here. And getting closer to finishing this. But every time I come, like I say, little bits keep getting put in. So, a little bit of skirting board here. Once doing some corner pieces being put in. But at the moment, I'm putting a coat of paint on the border. So I've already coated this up. This bottom end, this has had its coat. That's going to be the final colour. So you see the white, the difference in the white there. Very subtle. And what is going on is this down here. Like I say, timeless. I'm using this up. That's what's gone on. And then this is what I've got to carry on with. So, same colour. Just got that mixed up. Right, so I've got all that to do down there. And this will all want a second coat. But just first coating these. A bucket of water with a damp cloth in it. And I've also got a damp cloth up there. So when I come off my plank, pop the one in that I've been using and then take this one out. Just keeps them soaked and uh, keeps the paint out of them, water based. And I'm using a small scuttle with a mini roller and just inch and a half brush. This is rough sawn timber. And when I say rough sawn, I do mean rough. Very soft as well. So can't really sand it back. So you just see the grain there. It doesn't want to sand out. Quite a harder grain with very, very soft. So all you're doing is taking away the soft. You try plain in it, but it's all up. And it's rough, like I say. So I've gone round, I've filled all the joints, done my best for it. But again, these great big lumpy knots, it's a knot. So you either take them out and fill them, but wow, that would be a lot. So roll them. Well, first of all, I'm gonna start by cutting in the edges. So take a dip. to this end and just coat those edges up
work up to that mitre there. Same principle when rolling up to the edges on walls where there may be rebate or corner or window reveal. Don't push the paint around the edge. Take another dip. Starting more in the centre of the board and working up to the edge. Two edges to run down now. So, quick look at that. Just take a look at this length that I've already painted and note how there's no paint on the boards on that tongue and groove. So, if I'd have started to cut in and come onto that face, it will look quite ugly. But from here, not a problem. I'll show you what I did. Very easy. Pretty much like this side. I'm going to tack in that edge up to there. Then I can start cutting in and rolling. And then jump onto that other side. Take that edge down and again cut in and roll. And it's quite a long stretch so I've got both my planks set up obviously that far one's dipping because this whole lot is sloping down so that higher end up here so the edge I caulked probably five six days ago and paint I want to just start to work up to that cork line if I start to come too far over then it'll look horrible from down below. So that's where I'm gonna make my line. And that will be my line. If you go any further, and like I say, you'll start to touch the boards and it will look proper nasty.
could have used tape, which really doing something like this I never do. There's a couple of reasons why this needs two coats. Technically, you should remove your tape between coats, get a better finish. There's no chance I'm messing around doing that. Now, obviously, if you can't cut in, then that's what you do. So, keep going. Roll. Feather so them off. So what it looks like from up here it's going to look a lot different from down below. And like I say, from down here, no problem. Looking good, looking good. So our speakers been cut out I'm more gonna go in the back wall yet so like I say these areas within the borders are gonna have print and we have a sample here so I'll just take a quick look yeah a few recognizable faces on that Chris I one it's gonna look good this is all had one coat now so really look much different from the white but obviously when that print goes on then that will stand out that's okay so I can wipe this back I mean this is this dries quite quick so I think possibly in another hour I'd be able to coat that up but I've got too much to do to be messing around with that so that'll get another coat tomorrow I'll wipe that back now I can get me cork two types white and the light brown and now I can continue round these uh, borders now I've corked up to here and the rest of this one's corking the gaps so light brown here white here so I'll cork all this up and then I'm off one when it comes to corking tongue and groove against the ceiling line I've worked with the cork coming this way yeah now the damp cloth I'm coming back along smoothing working the opposite way that I've corked it I'll just smooth them back slightly Now so it just flattens them off neatly. Okay. If I was to, to work back this way, I wouldn't be getting the cork into that area. And obviously from down here looks fine. 
a good tip there. Not applying too much pressure. Just squeeze slightly. And just letting off where the groove is. And gently just smooth back the other way. Not putting too much on, you won't be taking too much off. Just getting it to sit nicely where the grooves are. Nearly done, nearly done. Just the corner to do. That's it. I'm done for the day. So that's corks all the way round. This is what I used, obviously the white around the central areas and the perimeter was this light brown for floors but very very flexible. It is a neat way of sorting that edge out because when it gets painted Sound. Um.